as a person giving treatments, you will have to move between the sections. So we're currently in Queens and Kits. The kittens are done with their treatments. I now have to give treatments in quarantine B. In order to do that, I'm gonna have to put on boots. I'm gonna have to put on a gown. And these, are, you as a treatment volunteer are one of the few people that can actually move between the sections. We just have to do it safely. So we're gonna go into quarantine B and we're gonna give Arabelle her advantage, her FELV test, and a microchip. So we're gonna do an FELV test. So this is a test for feline leukemia. All kittens currently get this test at five weeks old. So it is in a silver package when you get it out from the fridge. It needs to warm up to room temperature. So this box has been sitting out for a few minutes just to bring the temperature up. And you can bring the whole box out and put it back in the fridge when you're done. So with this, you need the blue conjugate that goes with that particular box. So the number on here has to match the number on here. So we have GM101 on there and we have GM101 on there. They have to match for the test to work. So when the box is out of test, Throw the blue conjugate away. Do not mix it with another box. There's these little vials in there. So you need four drops of the blue solution in the vial. I remember it. Blue, B-L-U-E, is four letters. So I just spell out blue as I'm dripping it in there. So B-L-U-E, that's four drops. And then we mix that with three drops of blood, which is red. So I spell R-E-D for the blood. We also need a needle to draw up the blood. Whichever size you would like to use is your choice. I prefer to use insulin needles. Some people prefer to use one cc needles. So for today, I'm gonna to use an insulin needle. So these are the insulin needles. They're actually a lot smaller than the one cc's. So I just prefer them because the kittens are small and these um, are easier for me to use on them. So I usually take two and have one on standby just in case um, the blood draw doesn't go to plan. So they have these little um, tabs on the back you have to pull off and it's important with these needles to plunge them before you use them because they are kind of sticky so you want to make sure they're moving freely before you start using them and for the FELV test to work we actually have to use an anticoagulant called heparin which will help the blood not clot before you can get it into the test um, a supervisor or a member of the medical team will pre-heparinize the needles for you. You are not expected to do that. So these needles are now heparinized. Um, I just did that, but like I said, you want to ask a supervisor or someone from medical to do that for you. So we're ready to go. I have my test. I have my conjugate, my needles, my microchip that I'll be administering after, and then I'm going to put my boots and my gown on before I go into the section. So other things I need for this kitten's treatments is alcohol. So before I um, insert the needle to draw the blood, I'm gonna put some alcohol on the kitten's hind leg. And then afterwards, I have some Advantage that is already drawn up um, that I'm gonna apply, um, which is a topical treatment for fleas. So she's due for that as well. The dose for this is 0.05 cc's per pound so you have to make sure that you're way back up even before the point one and this kitten is right around one and a half pounds so she gets a little more than 0.5 cc's so we're going to start out with the blood draw and um, my assistant is going to hold this is a two-person job so you will need someone working with you you can't do this by yourself and while she's getting the kitten I'm going to get some gloves 
So your um, partner is going to scruff the kitten, whichever direction you are going to prefer. I prefer to draw from this back leg. Uh, so I'm going to, my holder is holding the tail tucked up, firmly holding it to the belly, gently scruffing, and sometimes bobbing the kittens helps them relax. It's important that your holder keeps you safe. You, the holder does not want to let the kitten come back, um, come around and apply teeth to your hands. And then they want to keep their self safe so they would never want to put their fingers by the kitten's mouth. And then they're also going to hold off on the vein so it gently pumps it up. And you can see the this kitten has a nice white leg. So you can see the vein right here on the leg. And I'm going to draw, I need about, I need at least um, 1.1, which on the insulin syringe would be 10, but I'm gonna try and get a little bit more. So again, you wanna have the bevel up, which can be harder to see with these insulin syringes. It's important. So I'm gently gonna go into the vein and draw back. And as you can see, we now have our blood and I held down when I pulled the um, needle out and then my partner takes over and holds off where the blood um, came from. Good. Good girl. <laughs> so there is a plastic tube inside the packet and you want to put your blood inside this tube. I usually push down and then pull back as I'm drawing in so it flows down. And then you want three drops out of here into the blue liquid. So one, two, three. And that's how you measure how much blood to conjugate you need. And it's important, the heparin was important because this would be clotted by now without the heparin. And then once you're done mixing your um, conjugate and blood in this little test, this is the well that you're gonna pour the blood into. And then the blood will run down until it gets to the little dot at the bottom. You'll start to see the red come through. And when that happens, I'm gonna push down this end and snap it, which is why it's called a snap test. Okay, you can just see the red coming through. It's important to snap it right when it's in that window. And then I'm gonna set a timer for eight minutes and come back and check on it. So we're done with the blood draw. While this test is running, we're gonna microchip the kitten. I always do the blood draw first because it takes a while to run and also you want the kitten to be as calm as possible when you're drawing the blood to make your life easier. So the needle that I used goes in the sharps. It's an insulin needle, so the needle is attached so I can't break it off. So I'm gonna put the whole thing in the sharps container and then everything else you used can go in the trash. So, this kitten is going to be microchipped. So we have a microchip scanner, and uh, this is what a microchip looks like in the packaging. We always want to make sure that the microchip actually works before we put it in the kitten, so we always scan, and you can see that the number on the scanner and the number on the label in there match up. And then we always scan the animal because we want to make sure that someone else hasn't chipped them because we don't want to double chip them. So we're going to give her, we're going to scan her, make sure that nothing pops up in there. So nothing's in there. So we can move forward with chipping her. So we'll open it up. And we save this part for later. This part will go to the adopter, so please don't throw it away. 
So the microchip needle is considerably larger than the other needles um, that we use. Once the cap is off, you don't want to place the needle down anywhere because then it would not no longer be sterile. So we'll pull the cap off. So on this needle, you can see what the bevel is quite clearly. That is the way you want to insert the needle. So the microchip will come out this flat area and this point will is the part that pierces the skin. So I'm still gonna use my helper. Sometimes it's easier with two people to have someone support the butt so the kitten doesn't back away from it. And if you can gently scruff up high and hold the butt. So the chip's gonna go right between the shoulder blades. So you make a little tent and you make sure you have a little gap of skin there. And then I'm gonna insert the needle. And then gently push and then hold off so the chip doesn't come back out afterwards. So, it's good. cap off your needle and make sure that it's all capped off. Then on these needles, you can snap the top off carefully. This part goes in the sharps and this part goes in the trash. And then we always scan the kitten after to make sure that the chip is inside of the kitten and hasn't fallen out anywhere. And if it has fallen out, we just discard everything and we'll use a fresh needle and a fresh chip and rechip the kitten. So let's make sure it's in here. There we go. So now she's microchipped. And she was quite vocal for her blood draw and her microchip. Um, this is pretty normal for them to be vocal. As you can see, they recover really, really quickly. It's just a moment um, that they're a little bit stressed out, so we make sure we give them lots of love after and lots of positive attention to make it an overall positive experience for them. And then I'm gonna give her, lastly, her little drop of advantage. And we usually do it, rather than down where we just poked her, we'll do it up usually right on the back of the head, just about right here, just at the base of the ears, that's where we apply advantage. So we just do it on there. And now she is all done. She is microchipped, so if she gets lost in the future, we'll be able to know who she is if she shows up at a shelter or a vet's office. Um, we're checking to see if um, she has any viruses. The test is almost done, and she has her topical treatment. Or she'll keep her free from fleas. <laughs> so anything that you have touched um, after you've touched a kitten needs to be disinfected. So the alcohol touched the kitten. So I'm going to disinfect it and set it to the side. And then make sure I spray it down. The microchip scanner also needs to be disinfected because it is an electronic. Um, we will not spray the disinfectant directly on there. I'm going to spray it in a paper towel and then use that to wipe it down or else um, these break and they're quite costly to replace. Our timer is done, so I'm going to turn my timer off. And we are going to read this blood test. So, the middle dot that you're seeing is a control that is supposed to be there. So any test that you run, that, that center dot should be there. This is a negative test. That's exactly what we want to see. So one control dot, no other blue dots. If a blue dot shows up on the right hand side, that is considered a positive and you would want to alert the supervisor and a caregiver to put signage on the kennel and we can alert the medical team. If a dot shows up on the left, that means something went wrong with the test and we'll have to retest. After it's done, it goes in the trash. So we did Arabelle's treatments, so she got her advantage, she got her microchip, and she had her FELV test. And next to the FELV test, I'm going to do a negative sign to indicate that she was negative. And then on the microchip, I'm going to write her number so that we know that that links to that kitten. So her number is 223-234. So 
So after all your treatments are done, you want to hand this back to the supervisor desk where all of the treatments will be entered. And then what we do is we schedule out the treatments that will be due. So for dewormers, they're due every two weeks. For vaccines, they're due every two weeks. Microchips are one time only, as are blood draws. And Advantage usually is one time only, but if needed, every four weeks. And then make sure you spray down your cart before you wrap up and put it back into the right spot.